Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Jessica Flynn and I am the owner and maker of Flynn Sisters Boutique. And with Father's Day just around the corner, I wanted to bring you guys a fun kind of manly cup idea. I was really inspired by those like epoxy and wood river tables. And my husband asked me a couple of years ago, like how we can get that kind of design on a cup. And at the time I just couldn't wrap my head around it. Well, I figured it out and I thought it turned out really cool. So I'm so excited to show you guys this tutorial. You know, we're gonna have all the products listed and linked down below in the description box. You might even find some discount codes for you there as well. So that's definitely enough chit chat for me. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, you guys, so as usual, I'm starting with a fully prepped and sanded cup that I've already spray painted this beautiful like teal blue, light blue color. This is Seaside from Rust-Oleum, and I've got 30 milliliters of epoxy mixed here. And I'm going to put in a generous scoop of this mica powder. This is a beautiful like teal blue mica with a little bit of a green shift to it from Simply Sarah's Creations Micas. I'll have a link and a discount code down below for where you can find this. And I'm just going to mix that generous scoop into our epoxy here. And I want to make sure that it is evenly mixed throughout our whole pot of epoxy so we can ensure even distribution of color. We're going to apply this all the way around the cup while I have it on the turner. So basically just apply this like you would any other epoxy layer. Um, again, this is 30 milliliters of epoxy. I didn't end up using all of it, but this is a 20 ounce tumbler from Craft Haven. Um, so if you were using like a 30 ounce tumbler, you'd probably want the 30 milliliters of epoxy. And if you had a 20 ounce tumbler like I have here, I think 20 milliliters of epoxy probably would have covered it. All right, and then once I've got all of my epoxy on there um, spread evenly, what I'm gonna do with my hands is I'm gonna just kind of disrupt the flow of this mica. So I'm just going to kind of swirl it around with my fingers just so it's not like completely smooth color. I do want this to kind of mimic how epoxy would look if it was poured into a deep like crevasse, <laughs> I guess you could call it. Like if you look at the, the those epoxy tables, that epoxy kind of has like a bit of like a swirly pattern through the mica sometimes. So I'm just going to try and mimic that on my cup here. Also, another reason why we're not doing a super thin conservative layer of epoxy. I do want to have a little bit of movement um, with my epoxy on this layer of the cup. And once I'm done with that, I'm going to hit it with my torch really quick and I'm going to let this dry for four to six hours. And then I'm going to come back and do a, another layer of just regular epoxy right over that. We're gonna let that second layer of epoxy dry for eight to 12 hours, and now we're ready for our paint. I'm gonna start with a layer of this espresso brown from Rust-Oleum. This is a satin paint, and I just did a light solid coat. After that dried for about 20 to 30 minutes, I put on this flat white paint. Your dry time on your paint may vary based on how warm it is in your environment. I use a space heater to help speed that process up. On the white, I did do two solid layers of paint and I let that all dry for at least a half hour before I started on this paint removal process. All right, and just like we would like a geode paint design, I'm going to use acetone and rubbing alcohol to remove sections of paint from my cup. I've got a paper towel here and I'm using acetone from the hardware store, not the nail section. So this is just crown acetone that I got from Lowe's in a big jug. And I'm going to just squirt a little bit of that on my paper towel to remove this large section. You could find these pump bottles from the Dollar Tree or on Amazon. Once I've got a large section of paint removed, I'm gonna use the rubbing alcohol to clean up any of that muddled paint. I'm using 91% rubbing alcohol, and it does take a little bit of elbow grease to remove that excess paint. 
all right? Um, for best results, you wanna use flat white spray paint on something like this. Um, the brown that I used was a satin paint. Ideally, you would want that to be flat paint as well, just because they tend to be easier to remove and they stain less, okay? So when you have satin or gloss paints and you're trying to do this, they tend to stain and be harder to remove um, when you're cleaning up all that excess paint. I don't remove too much um, from the design here. I really want just a subtle bit of that blue coming through the paint. So I think I only ended up removing about two or three sections. Once I have the shape of the section that I want removed, I'm going to start working on those edges to expose more of the brown. In hindsight, I would have spent more time trying to expose more of the brown. To do that, you're just going to take some rubbing alcohol on your paper towel and really put in some elbow grease to remove just the white layer of paint from the top. Yes, it is hard. <laughs> you will have to put in a good amount of elbow grease to do this. Um, you should be pressing with like really hard pressure to remove that white paint and just expose some of the brown paint below. Alternatively, if you wanted to use black instead of the brown, that would look great as well. The amount of like sections that you wanna expose here is purely up to you and really get creative with this. I would take inspiration from other kind of wood and epoxy river tables to get an idea of like the type of design you want and the type of wood sections that you wanna create here. All right, now that we're done with the paint removal process, I'm ready to start with the wood grain. I'm using Latte Alcohol Ink from Tim Holtz, and I'm just gonna squirt a little bit of it into a medicine cup, um, and I've got a natural sponge here that I'm going to use to spread this color all over all of the white sections of my cup. This is just going to serve as like a background color for my wood grain. You definitely could use any kind of wood grain technique that you want to use for this. Just use extreme caution <laughs> to make sure that you don't get into those blue sections because you will stain your epoxy. I'm going to show you how to clean that up later in case that's something that, that happens, but just be super careful. So I'm just going to spread this color all the way around my cup. And then once I'm done with that, I'm going to move on into my darker color. We're gonna be using teak wood from Tim Holtz. And the way I do wood grain is just really super simple. I just run a line of ink along the cup and then I'll distribute it with my brush. Um, so I'm using a smaller brush along the boundary lines here of the blue. If you end up getting any of the ink into the blue sections, you could just take a Q-tip with some acetone to clean it up really quick. For the larger sections, I'm just running a line of ink and then brushing my chipboard through, or my chip brush through it. Um, my chip brush does have a little bit of rubbing alcohol misted onto it, um, but as time goes on, the more layering I do, the more I just want a completely dry chip, chip brush, okay? So all it is is just running a line of ink and then brushing over it with the chip brush until I get the desired um, like depth and darkness that I want. Um, on the bottom of my cup, I just kind of do like a weird like <laughs> round section. I'll be honest with you guys, I am not like the best wood grain artist. I really just try to get the job done, um, but I, I think I do okay. <laughs> so. Um, really, it's just a bunch of like layering and brushing until you get a look that works for you. Um, and once we're all done with that and we're happy with what we've got so far, I'm gonna show you guys how to clean up these edges. All right, so our wood grain is all done. And if you guys got any of the 
ink into the blue sections that stained, it's not really a big deal. Just take a little 220 grit sandpaper and sand that out a little bit. You shouldn't have to sand too much, just a tiny bit to remove it from the surface. And then very carefully go over that with rubbing alcohol to remove all the debris. And then a dry paper towel again to remove <laughs> all the debris. Uh, once we've got all that cleaned up, I'm going to go around all the edges of my blue sections with this black acrylic paint pen. This is a Posca paint pen. You could use Arteza paint pens. I'm, my black Arteza paint pen is all dried up, so that's why I'm using this one. Uh, but we're just going to take this along the edges of all those blue sections. This is going to look especially great if we use like a darker wood grain. And this is going to hide any of those imperfections that we might have in our wood grain or any of the ink that might have leaked into these blue sections. It's just going to clean it up and make it a lot more crisp looking and a lot more believable. And it's going to just give us a little more depth and make those blue sections really pop. Additionally, you can use this black paint marker to create any kind of like knots in your wood. If you see any kind of like naturally dark areas in your wood grain, you can just accentuate that with this black marker to create like knots. And if you have any discoloration in some of your lines, you can just go over it with a marker. You're gonna find that this is going to add a lot of really pretty detail and it's so simple to do. It takes no time at all and very little skill. <laughs> Don't have to know how to draw or anything to paint with this marker and to really make your wood grain pop and look really good. Once we're all done with this, I'm going to let it dry overnight. I really want to give these inks time to settle and dry before I seal them. I'm using Rust-Oleum two times clear gloss spray paint. And it's extremely important that I take an entire like 60 seconds or more to shake my paint before I spray paint this. There are ketones in those clear spray sealers that will break down the alcohol ink and cause discoloration or things like that. So I am going to set a timer on my phone and fully shake that can for a solid two minutes before I spray seal my cup. And one generous coat of spray seal is pretty is usually enough for me to seal these really nicely. It's really warm in my shop right now, so it only took about 20 minutes for the spray seal to dry, and then I was ready for my final coats of epoxy. I ended up doing two final coats on this to get it completely smooth, and I just couldn't decide on a decal for this, so I didn't put one on there. <laughs> I just really like the simplicity of this and I didn't go too crazy with this design either. I mainly just wanted to show you guys the concept of this idea and I hope you guys run with it and create something super cool. Let me know what you thought in the comments and if you like this video please be sure to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already so you don't miss a new video I upload every Wednesday and Saturday. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon. And a big thank you to all of our Flynn Sisters exclusive members. Thank you for your pledge. Your support means the world to our channel. If you love this video, you could check out our last video here. Also be sure to find us on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and of course subscribe for all our new videos that come out every Wednesday and Saturday. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.